Hello everyone, Lindsay here, and welcome back to the North American Guitar for another one of our Why You Need A videos. So far we've covered OMs and Dreadnoughts, and now by popular request, and because we are absolutely spoiled with both new and vintage ones, we are focusing on double O's. Double O's are interesting to me because on one hand, I feel like they're fairly easy to recognize and define, yet they come in such a wide variety of iterations. And while they're small, with the right setup, they can be even punchier than the larger and more balanced OM. So let's dive right in and talk about the inviting little guitar design. Steel string double O's have been around since the American Civil War, though unsurprisingly, the design really came into its own in the hands of Martin and Gibson in the 20s and 30s. They're comparable in size to a standard classical guitar and often described as filling a gap between the smaller single O's and parlors and the larger OM's and dreadnoughts. They're intimate and inviting, yet still have the presence needed for performing, so it's no surprise that double O's have been popular with songwriters and singers for decades. Like the OM and the triple O, double O's typically measure four to four and a quarter inches in depth, but they're a bit smaller in the lower bout. It's just 14 and a quarter to 14 and a half inches, which is a little bit smaller than the 15 inches of the OM and the triple O. While double O's are available in both 12 fret and 14 fret configurations, the 12 fret double O has a longer history. And to my ears, it's these ones that offer up the most distinctive and unique voice. That's due in part to the longer overall body length and the longer upper bout cavity, but possibly most important, it's the placement of the bridge on 12 fretters of any size that has a huge impact on the sound. On 14 fret guitars, the bridge is closer to the sound hole, which results in a brighter tone and attack. On 12 fretters though, the bridge is further back at the widest point of the lower bout, and the resulting tone typically has a warmer, gutsier sound. It's also worth noting at this point that to further capitalize on those qualities, double O's are frequently candidates for deep body versions, which gives them a base presence and richness almost on par with that of a dreadnought or jumbo. Now most traditional inspired double O's, whether 12 or 14 fret, are short scale, another feature that makes them well loved by finger stylists and perfect for easy, casual playing at home. But it's not uncommon to see standard scale length double O's, like this GR Bear Grand Double O, which combines a 12 fret neck join with a 25.4 inch scale, making it a bit more suitable for drop tunings and a heavier right hand attack. When it comes to net width, the more traditional 12 fret double O's often have a wider 1 and 13 16 inch nut, but some, like Collings 14 fret double O, are seen with a more narrow 1 and 11 16 inch nut to better serve flat pickers. From a performing musician standpoint, I'm not sure that I can as confidently argue that you, the viewer, need a double O the same way I could make that argument about a dreadnought and the OM. That said, in many ways, I think the double O with all its myriad versions answers a need or want that many players have in a way that those other guitars don't. The smaller lower bout is more comfortable, especially for those who may be dealing with right hand tension or injury, and they're perfect couch companions and songwriting tools. The mellower, richer sound makes them delightful for vocal accompaniment, but as discussed, the 14 fret design still gives them a powerful voice that can carry well in old time jams and ensembles. And given the high quality of pickups these days, there's no reason these small body guitars can't dominate the stage as well. You can find everything from traditional double O's with slotted headstocks and minimal appointments in classic mahogany and rosewood, to modern designs with cutaways and uncommon tone woods. Personally, I think the size and shape is especially well suited to the characteristics of woods like cedar, walnut, koa, ebony, and maple, so double O's present a really great opportunity to explore beyond the usual spruce and rosewood or mahogany. In the end, if you're looking for an intimate, comfortable guitar, a double O is a great place to start, and with so many options to choose from, even an off-the-rack model can feel like you're getting a custom guitar. Thanks for learning more about the double O guitar with me today. If you're a double O player yourself, tell us about yours, and if I've missed anything today, feel free to drop a question in the comments below. You can check out all of these guitars and everything else we have in stock over at thenorthamericanguitar.com. And last but not least, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you never miss any of the vintage, handmade, and unique guitars that we get here in our Nashville showroom. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.